Good morning, folks. Today we're hitting an earthquake, tropical storms on opposite sides of the world, a new space weather monitoring mission, space news eye candy, and a study on solar forcing of water quality. But we are starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, coronal holes departing, sunspots decaying. Doesn't matter. The filaments pick up the slack. Three of the prominences rose up and erupted. No major CMEs were produced, but it's yet another reminder of why we have to watch those filaments. One of them snapped very quickly, Southern Hemisphere incoming. A small and faint CME was released by this one, but remember we've still got multiple filaments in Earth-facing position now, monitoring them all again today. Big quake struck the West Pacific, 6.6 .6 in Papua New Guinea. The region is used to larger seismicity there. Hopefully that was the pressure release and is not a foreshock. And we're off to the typhoons. Two of them here. One will hit Taiwan today and the other the Philippines. That'll be the fifth major typhoon in a month to hit the island. Meanwhile, Sarah continued developing in the Caribbean, on track to go west and hit Central America in the Yucatan Peninsula, and then is expected to go north and re-enter the water over the Gulf. It will then curl towards the states, keeping a close eye on the development of this forecast. Speaking of tropical activity, about five days ago we reported the four typhoons in the West Pacific. Turns out, it was in fact the first time four have spun there in November on record. Little tidbit on record-breaking activity. Up next, folks, we're going to the SMILE mission. It will be monitoring the solar wind interaction with the Earth from ambient quiet conditions to solar storm impacts. Hopefully, it'll be able to better measure the energy deposition into the Earth system and aid in curing the lack of appreciation for that energy found in climate models. One hopes, anyway. Up next, we're going to get some eye candy. We're zooming in on the Rosette Nebula. We're finding that the new imagery reveals the heart of stars fueling the bright returns of the nebula. This was taken by the Dark Energy Camera, which has never found anything remotely close to dark energy, but sure has delivered some amazing shots of the cosmos. Another update comes from the team studying the Large Magellanic Cloud. It's the dwarf galaxy orbiting our Milky Way, and they say it's completed its close approach and has lost nearly its entire gas and dust halo due to the interaction. Now, this is an eons-long process, and what we're seeing now actually took the light tens of thousands of years to arrive here at Earth. Lastly, folks, we're finding that the water quality and characteristics at the Kiev Reservoir appear to have perfect ups and downs with the solar cycle. This includes everything from iron content to manganese, oxygenation, turbidity. Interesting to see the end line data resulting from the sun's influence on rainfall and ground currents. Don't forget I'll be out at the ranch midday and early afternoon tomorrow. Then we'll have four big events coming up the next couple of months. You definitely want to come check one out. Link is below at ObserverRanch.com. And folks, it's time for the next issue of the e-magazine, Observer Review. It'll come out tomorrow, and if you're hoping to keep all the various news straight in your head and stay updated on space weather, climate forcing, and the pole shift disaster cycle, this is the only publication on Earth dedicated to them. Link to that is below as well. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.